But the Diamondbacks have decided not to pick up their side of Mark Melanson's $5 million mutual option for 2024, which will they still owe $2 million for the buyout? They still owe $2 million dollars in the buyout. So yeah, it was basically, would you rather pay $3 million more million to have Mark Melanson actually pitch for you next season? And the Diamondbacks said no, essentially. They have been moving on, right? Like they've been moving on from guys that they feel like they gave an opportunity to and didn't perform well. And Mark Melanson really didn't have a great time here and a lot of it was spent obviously injured as well so that didn't help but i mean you cannot say that the melanson signing wasn't a good one you can just say that on the flip side really (laughs) well here's why i say that here's why i say that because when they signed him and he came to the team like his performance in his career was one of the worst right like it was one of the worst seasons of his career right and it comes off of one of the best Right, he posted a 2.23 ERA with a 1.22 WHIP and 39 saves for the Padres in 2021. Yeah, in 2021, Jesse, that was just one year later before he was here blowing saves for this team. But, um, it, you know, again, his his time here uh, was quite forgettable, and and unfortunately, he really didn't have a chance to redeem himself with this franchise because of the injuries. Yeah. It it really is crazy to think back when this move was first made. It was viewed very positively by basically everyone, right? Especially us. We yeah, yeah, we, we were yeah, doing a little we happy dance. We were stuff. we were yeah. doing our show at that point. I think it was December of 2021, after a very rough season, right, where the the Diamondbacks bullpen was one of many problems, but certainly one <laughs> of the one of the bigger ones. Everything was a problem. The Diamondbacks <laughs> hadn't had you know really a viable closer in a number of years, and Mark Melanson, like you you signed like the saves leader, like yeah. you signed the NL saves leader yeah. from the year prior. Yeah, like you said, a two two three ERA in twenty twenty one with the San Diego Padres, and he comes here and man, that twenty twenty two season last year, it was it was rough when Mark Melanson was in that role yeah. and it didn't last particularly long the diamondbacks eventually needed to pivot but a 466 era a 150 whip a 5.6 strikeouts per nine which strikeouts have never been everything for mark melanson but there's really no one on the planet who can put together like a successful year as a closer striking out that few batters is just really really hard to do uh, and yeah, you know, it'll it'll be interesting to see where things go from here for Melanson. Maybe there's an opportunity still out there waiting for him. Maybe there's there's a team that, you know, wants to give him a shot. But this also might be the last that Mark Melanson has has pitched in in the majors. Uh, I think that is at least a possibility. And if that's the case, it was a heck of a career. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, just really impressive numbers. He had a, a career ERA just under three, has a career ERA just under three as of right now. Uh, but yeah, it was unfortunate for the Diamondbacks that they sort of got the very tail end yeah. when when most of that productivity was gone. And maybe uh, maybe I phrased that incorrectly, but I just mean like I it wasn't a bad signing because it uh, because of his numbers, because of everything he'd done, done in his career to bring somebody with that experience and that consistency over to the bullpen. Yes, it very much felt like a great signing. It is and what the Diamondbacks needed. And yeah, yeah I I totally agree with what you're saying that like sometimes good signings end poorly yeah like this doesn't yeah. feel like it, hindsight is 2020 right yeah. we can't always play the game of like oh that was a terrible move and they should have known it was going to be a terrible right. move right sometimes all signs pointed that to be a great signing you know yeah and so like you were saying sorry to cut you off but yeah sometimes it just doesn't work out right and i mean you know it's different like araldus chapman for instance is a guy that if you took a chance on it that might be a, a signing where a lot of people would have criticism to bringing someone like that over. And then if it doesn't work out, there would probably be a vocal majority that were like, yeah, we thought like we didn't want this guy. We did. That was not the case with Melanson. And like you said, everybody saw the move is fairly favorable. And unfortunately for Melanson, it just it, and for the Diamondbacks, it just didn't work out. There um, is always some risk when you're signing a guy who's as old as Melanson was. I guess that is part of what we have to watch acknowledge. It, just like, watch it, Friedman. <laughs> I'm just saying. As a professional athlete, Derek, <laughs> people in their upper 30s and low 40s are oh, still there perfectly <laughs> they're great contributors to society, but maybe you don't want them always oh, pitching the ninth inning for you. Bitch. Or playing third baseball.